Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're just joining me for the first time, hi, my name is Angel Fish, pronouns they, them. I apologize for my very chipped Barbie pink nails. It's been a week. Anyway, as you can tell by the title, you know, y'all can read, um, we are finishing off Skultimate Secrets, at least for Frankie Stein, with their third, and at this point in time, final doll for Neon Frights, which is an upcoming release. I got this doll early from Paul Mart. I don't know if he's going to have them in stock again soon. I was just lucky to be online at the time where one of my friends happened to be checking and they were like, hey, he has some of Frankie in, and Draculaura in stock. Now, I did not get Draculaura. Full disclosure, and we're going to talk about them real quick right here at the back of the box because the rest of the lineup is here. Full disclosure, Neon Frights is not my favorite theme from the Skultimate line, and I am very much considering skipping literally everybody except for Frankie, maybe Gulia, maybe Twyla. But as far as I'm concerned, Frankie is really the only one that I wanted from this series, and now that I have them, that will determine how I feel about the rest of the line going forward, because generally with one doll from the series, uh, when it comes to Skultimate, you can generally guess what the others are going to be like quality-wise. And, you know, I'm, I'm a Frankie Stein completionist, so we have to. Anyway, Frankie will retail for $29.99 here in the U.S., same as the other Skultimate Secret series. And, you know, here's that lovely Darko art that you see, and it says on their box, Glow in the Dark. So there are probably going to be several pieces that glow in the dark with this doll, and I look forward to uncovering what those are. I have my UV light with me so that I can check and see which pieces are. I won't be able to show them in video because my camera can only pick up glow-in-the-dark stuff in photos, and I don't really have the time or capability to insert photos into videos, so I will post those to, I think, the community tab when I am done recording and when it's dark enough outside for me to, like, make my room completely black so that I can test the glow-in-the-dark feature for photography purposes. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Um, I already posted this to doll Twitter, like, as soon as I got them out of the box, but here is Frankie's barcode in case you are looking for them. And without further ado, I've rambled on long enough. It is time to get in uh, to the locker. Alrighty, here we are, coming out of the dark. Love a good reference to that song. I can and will do it every time. Uh, here we have our third iteration of the door for the big bulky plastic locker that we all are starting to grow tired of. Allegedly, this is the last series that's going to have them, so thank the stars for that. I hope they change the packaging to something else, because, I mean, the, the lockers are cute and all, but there's only so much you can do with them. The door this time is, like, very geometric with the raw iron spider webs and... For Frankie, it's a lightning bolt pattern. I don't know if that's the same for the others, but, you know, it's in yellow, which is, I guess, their color for this doll. This door's already open at the bottom. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, the locks, the, the keys are kind of useless. Anyway, first impressions, please have a good face. Oh. Oh, that is bright. That is bright pink. See, I was planning on giving them a black lip, Oh, I feel like I'm going to disappoint so many mutuals, but this pink is so obnoxious I can't help but love it. The harness has got to go, though. I can tell y'all with a fact I am not liking it already. Um, but this is, this is cute. Okay, I'm gonna get Frankie out of the box real quick, and then we're gonna talk about them. Uh, and, and the locker door, because, you know, it's a new series. With every new doll, we got to go over the locker door and the, those contents. So if you want to screen grab that in a bit, uh, just stay tuned. Okay, so Frankie's out of the box. We're going to go over them in a second. But first things first, you know, parents, uh, guardians, older siblings, doll collectors who like to follow instructions, because sometimes, you know what, it's valid. Um, as always, these come little slightly folded wedge under the doll's shoes. If you need those, keep track of them. 
Oh, I should check to see if Frankie has their unique art because they do, they do. Okay. Also, uh, I, I do need to note um, with Frankie and we'll, we'll just get their hair out of the way real quick. Um, so yes, it's polypropylene. Um, however, it's like Cleo's on her signature doll or monster ball. Uh, it's like Cleo's polypropylene, like the actually decent moisturized kind. Like this could confuse somebody for nylon. That's how soft it is out of box, which is unusual for polypropylene. I don't have to wash this because it doesn't feel like a broom for once. Let that sink in. That's a first. I was like, oh, I mean, it feels nice. It's still poly. It's not going to be nylon because Mattel will never use nylon. They don't have the infrastructure for it as far as we are aware, as far as we have been told. But it does not feel like absolute garbage. So that is worth noting. Anyway, also in that main compartment is the key with the color change feature, which I will not be doing in this video. I know, I'm so sorry. I know it's like a new series and whatnot, but I do not have the spoons to deal with the sticky watercolor things, even though I do have my hemostats handy. Um, I just, it's, I, it's been a day. I don't, I just want to unbox the doll without having to deal with the keys. Anyway, let's take a look inside their background, which I actually decided to preserve this time because it's very different from what we were getting. It's themed a little bit more closely to what the doll is actually wearing. Um, it's like this disco dance floor neon lights, like influencer sign kind of thing. This is really cute. I like this. Um, and then of course, you know, we have their locker door, which up here, you have a little mini mannequin, some scissors. Uh, let me start zooming in on that. Oh, the door wants to get away from me, but that is not appropriate door. You need to behave, please. You have a little moon with skelet shaped craters, a little dress form, um, some safety pins. This hand is a playset, I believe, or at least there is an accessory studio um, that has Frankie's hand as a thing, so that is cool. Uh, you have some Monster High hair chalk right there, except with Frankie's skullette on it instead of Laguna's, um, because Laguna's the only doll that's come with hair chalk right now, which, might I say, the spa day hair chalk is absolutely useless. No child is going to get joy from that because it doesn't even work on blondes. You have this little black and white photo of amped up Frankie here that is dated... Zero three oh one twenty twenty two. I'm assuming that's when they were designed, or at least when Amped Up was designed. Interesting. Okay, then you have this poster of this absolutely totally not Mythbusters looking freaking monster pairing right here with a vampire and a werewolf, uh, with the freaking grid paper cape. Okay, I see you, <laughs> nerds. I love them. Okay, then you have this Phoenix World Tour poster, Rotland, Scargentina, Skyro, Boulin, Scaris, Boo York, Bidley, Bidley? Hexaco, Fanghai, Monstralia. That's a new one. Never once did they call it that in G1, and I wish they wouldn't. That's a very strange monster pun, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Uh, this neon sign heart with a stitch in it. Very cute. A lot of sewing tools at the bottom. These are very cute. I would love to get an accessory set that has these. Um, their purse that they come with, blueprints for it. Uh, they are 3D printing a little vinyl figure of G1 Watsy. Or Watts it was his name in G1. Oh my god, it's... I See, I never paid attention to the pets in G1 except for Neptuna because I didn't care about them because they weren't fishes except for Neptuna because <laughs> I was a stubborn child. Little little buttons that I would love to see Hot Topic carry at some point. Uh, speaking of pets, there's Wattsy in his little creepover bed um, looking very much more detailed than any of the other artwork that we have seen for G3 so far. This is, like, heavily rendered, and it's honestly kind of funny. Uh, then we have, like, a, another little hand attached to a spring, and it's got a little razor. Uh, their eye coffin is charging right there. And then they have this 
wall outlet. Good, they're not overloading the electrical circuit. That's that's nice. And their fridge is full of hair oil, hair dye, uh, some of which they have freshly mixed, and then their snacks are on the bottom shelf. I think it's very funny um, that they are using the mini fridge for both simultaneously. I'm like, you know what? You make do with what space you got. Anyway, it is time for the main event. Mix Stein themselves. Oh my god. Okay, so a lot of people are like very 50-50 on this doll. Some people love them. Some people really hate them. And for me, I'm like, okay, I am a Frankie fan first and foremost. Secondly, I mean, I love bright, obnoxiously colored things. If my choice in fingernail polish color for recent videos is any indication, and by recent videos, I think this is the first video I filmed with pink nails and they're already like all ruined from a week of working in the ceramic studio. <laughs> God. But okay, so this is the um, Ghoul Spirit head sculpt, which means it's got the shaved side that's got the texture on it. No flocking because G3 has not used flocking ever. And y'all keep getting your hopes up for it. And it's like the only thing that I have seen Mattel use flocking powder on in recent years is the Barbie signature look dolls. It's not going to happen for G3, at least not in this immediate future. Let's stop getting our hopes up every time we see a doll with shaved sides. You guys are like, oh, I hope they have flocking. You're setting yourselves up at this point. It's not going to happen. Mattel, this is your opportunity to please prove me wrong. But at this point in time, it currently stands. It's probably not going to happen. Um, we have this really bright neon makeup. Their piercing is the same neon pink that is used through their eyeshadow, uh, their lips. People are like, why couldn't they have used the coffee break screening? Uh, I don't know. I kind of like this a little bit more. Um, hot take, but hold on a sec. Because, like, okay, coffee break is a good side glance, but also coffee break... And you'll notice mine is a little wonky, has weird brows, and I'm sure if you saw toy hunting videos or if you even went looking for them yourself um, early on in G3's run, you would know that Coffee Break Frankie had the absolute worst quality control when it came to their screening placement. Their eyes were all over the place, and half the time it was difficult to find one where the eyes were evenly sized evenly spaced, and appropriately placed on the sculpt. Like, just sometimes a doll with a side glance is more prone to, you know, whatever. But I, I just, I like this a little bit more, because it's centered. It looks like they fixed the problem. It's cute. You know, this is, this is a cute side glance. I don't mind it. Um, now they have their little stitch, which for some reason on this doll... Oh, my phone camera is absolutely freaking out at the neon colors. Okay, so their stitch on this doll on their face is a lot larger and thicker than on other screenings. That's peculiar. I hope that's just mine, because... The other two immediately wanted to fall over, and it's like, can you two not do that? Let Neon Frights have their moment, please. Like, y'all are disappointing me back there. Stop falling over. Okay. Anyway, um, oh, also, I forgot to mention, but I'm pretty sure that this Frankie is made in Indonesia because they have the cooler-toned skin. Yep, Indonesia, right there. Which means they have a much more, like, blue-gray tone to their skin compared to, say, Series 1's Ultimate Frankie or... Um, Ghoul Spirit or Coffee Break, like they they have a, a more blue tinge, um, almost like a bone blue. If I'm being honest, like it's it's fairly close to G1 Laguna's skin tone, um, save for I think pearlescence. Like here's here's a G1 Laguna, it's pretty damn close. Um, but yeah, it's very very interesting. Uh, and then they have this little lightning bolt underneath their cheek right here. And I hope this is sealed properly because it looks a little smeared. But yeah, I cannot get over the fact that their hair is actually moisturized like Monster Ball Cleos or uh, Signature Cleos. Like that's a that's a first for polypropylene on Frankie. Like that, this is silky. This is nice for a, well, as nice as a shitty hair fiber can get. 
Also, sorry, I swear sometimes. Now, their outfit pieces are contentious amongst the doll community. You have this lovely little halter top that I am a big fan of. Um, but then you have this giant chunky rubber harness, and it is rubber, it is squishy, um, that's got one painted detail on it, and it's that bright yellow lightning bolt. And it's cute in theory, but in execution, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, the sculpting goes all the way at the back, so it's a very interesting sculpt, but it's just, it doesn't match the other pinks that are on them. It's a different shade, and I, it, that bothers me. It's, it's a little warmer toned. Um, so we're actually gonna take that off right now, and you'll never see it again. <laughs> That's not true. I, I gotta take pictures of this shit for Instagram and Twitter and what that and no I will not be calling it X because you know what Elon Musk dead names his own child so fuck him now they have pleather biker shorts which I know we are tired of seeing because I see it all the time it is at the very least a different length than coffee breaks and I believe it is a different length than the ones that came with Series 1, which are currently on my Fearidescent Frankie. Because, um, you know, they swapped clothing pieces a bit. That's the fun with Sculptimate Secrets. Um, God, I love the print on this. I wish there was a bottoms piece that matched it better. Ugh. Okay. Now we have their boots, which are very, very, very bright yellow. Um, I believe these are supposed to glow in the dark, one of many elements in this doll that is supposed to. I cannot make out what the sculpting on them is. Is it electricity? Is it stitches? Is it cheetah print? Question mark? There's a zipper down the front of both of them sculpted in. I think it is cheetah print. That's on che cheetah print texture on a Frankie doll. I don't know how I feel about that. That's interesting. And then the the actual platform of these heels and boots is actually really cool, and I like it. It's a shame that it's not painted, um, probably because it would hinder the glow-in-the-dark capabilities. But, you know, it's got little caution signs on the bottom, metal grate texture, and then big old staples and stitches and seams, which I think is really cool. Um... And then they have their gummy leg, as I affectionately call it, which is this neon blue, slightly transparent looking leg. And I want to test something with it. Hold on a sec. Okay, so disappointing news, everybody. This is just regular blue translucent plastic. Here I was thinking, oh, they're going to make their entire leg glow in the dark, because why else would they make it a blue that looks like glow plastic? But it's not. It's just a gummy leg. That brings in a lot of questions. Um, granted, there's nothing wrong with it color wise it's very cute it's a very plain shade of blue it could go with a lot of things but it's just kind of like come on go the extra mile but also you know what actually never mind i'm kind of relieved because unlike flexible glow plastic glow plastic like this if if this was glow plastic tends to be ra rather like finicky maybe even fragile in my experience so you know what considering frankie's little ankle situation right there i'm kind of glad that it's not glow plastic actually uh, thank you, Mattel, for thinking about that. Now, time to uh, stop rambling about them and get into all of their accessories. We're just going to use Furidescent Cleo's keys because it's it's their girlfriend's keys. Ghoul friend. Oh, that's an obnoxious paper color, but like not in a good way. It's not like neon obnoxious where it's fun. It's like kind of a pukey doo-doo mustard color. Okay. Uh, that's nasty. I don't like the color choice there. Should have made it different shade of yellow because it looks like baby diarrhea. Ew. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, their their jacket was like wrapped in, in a little paperboard thing, presumably to keep the vinyl cutouts on it from getting all fucky during shipping. But here is their jacket, this bright... Uh, neon yellow color with a faux zipper ribbon sewn on the front. That's always fun. And these blue clear vinyl lightning bolts on it. Kind of reminds me of like a scene kid hoodie, which is why I like this piece a lot. Very cute. Surged edges on the mesh sleeves. 
Um, but there's really not much to it. It's a very simple jacket. Then we have this pleather piece, which has some pink lightning bolts on it. And honestly, kind of matches one of the other tops that we've gotten with Skultima Secrets. Uh, there's no crotch catch in it, unfortunately. Mattel, you had one job. Give me back the gold star stickers I gave you for the Furidescent skirts having crotch catches on most of them. Um, but yeah, this is another wet look latex piece. Uh, I was kind of hoping that we would get one that wasn't because wet look pleather... It doesn't age the best, and the toy com like the toy industry as a whole just kind of has an obsession with wet look fabrics right now. Whether it's for Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach plushies or for Monster High pleather biker shorts, either way that shit is peeling in less than ten years. So, you know, um, we're not thinking about longevity here, are we? Now we have this shirt here, which is a cropped piece um, at the bottom. I, it's got their pillow from Creep Over and a surged edge, but I don't remember seeing this in the stock images, and I don't like it. Like, point blank. I don't like that clothing piece. The halter top is superior. Okay, rapid fire. We have their little clutch purse, which I presume glows in the dark because it's made out of the same material as their boots. It opens. I don't know what's going to fit in here, possibly, because that is a very thin clutch. Like, literally no room for any accessories in there. Um, you have this lightning bolt choker, which I assume glows in the dark as well. It is made out of the same plastic. We will put that on them later. And then we have their earrings, which are these little skelettes with chains on them. And they are just plain black. And I will put that on them now. And they actually have both ears pierced. On oh, what the fuck? Okay, that's scary. We will put that on them later because that almost broke. Okay. Next bag. This is the key ring, which is maybe glow plastic, maybe not. We will know after I'm done recording. And then... Also in this little compartment, we have the key to the last door, which is almost always the snacks. I forgot to mention the the keys this time have the little, uh, like, faceted texture that the door has. Um, the keys tend to match the doors for each uh, set, except for Series 1. I think they were just smooth. And in here we have these very cute little, like, platform... What? Platform? Why did I say it like that? Platform vans uh, with lightning bolts and Frankie's skelet on the bottom. That is adorable. Um, and they have the little heart monitor sculpted into the sides. One is black, one is white. Um, very easy to keep track of left from right, I guess. I like this. Okay, originally I hated those shoes in the stock pictures, so I'm glad that I like them in person. Um final bag. And then we wrap this up. Oop, there is unnecessary plastic around the laptop. Good to know. Good to know. Oh, ew, Frankie, why is this your snack choice? Pizza chips. These are nasty. Pizza chips are absolutely a sin against nature, okay? I'm gonna rant for a second. That is like one of the worst things ever invented by the snack food um, industry was pizza chips, because why would I want room temperature crunchy bits of mozzarella with pepperoni dust when I could have an actual fucking pizza? Like, it's just nasty. The taste off. Okay, Voltageous. This is adorable. We have a little heart with them and Cleo's hand in it. Um, lightning bolt patch, non-binary uh, color palette, lightning bolt with comb. I think the Voltageous sticker is also non-binary colors because it's got white, purple, black, and a little bit of yellow towards the bottom. Their heart. Uh, lots of lightning bolts. This is UV screening, so... You know, and then they're, they are watching hair tutorials on Ghoul Tube for the hairstyle that they currently have. 
And for their G1 hairstyle, that is cute. I like this sculpt, it's adorable. Uh, and then they also come with this big ass hair dryer, which I believe Amped Up Frankie also comes with, but in a different color, um, except it's like translucent blue with this release. And very rubbery trimmers. Yay! Okay, time to get Frankie dressed up in an outfit combo and give my final thoughts. Okay, they're just wearing the skirt and these shoes for the end of the video. I have a lot of trouble playing mix and match with the outfit pieces that they come with, but that's just because I'm not a fan of like literally all of the secondary outfit pieces except for the jacket. Um, now, that being said, I did some tests before um, off camera. The choker does glow in the dark. These shoes glow in the dark. The purse glows in the dark. The keys do not glow in the dark. This is just regular, very bright neon plastic. It fluoresces under black light, but it does not glow. Uh, this does not glow either, but it does fluoresce under black light. Uh, same with their makeup. Their makeup fluoresces under black light, does not glow. So there's only four pieces in total that have glow in the dark components to them. Um, now, as far as they go rating wise against series one and two, um, mm, base doll wise, I kind of want to put them above series one because series one had the driest hair out of the three of these. Um, series three has the nicest hair out of the three of these. So, you know, it would probably be like this if we're just talking about base doll, um, not accounting for makeup, not accounting for, you know, that sort of stuff. Now, as far as mix and match ability is, I'm going to have to play around with their outfit pieces a bit more. I believe I have another one of Furidescent's skirts, and I'm going to see how that looks on them off camera. We're, we're going to make some outfit combo work for them, but as far as I'm concerned, this is another Series 1 incident where a lot of the pieces they come with just do not feel like they can create a coherent look, uh, which is why I was kind of wary about Neon Frights just in general. But, yeah, final thoughts, I would give them solid 7 out of 10. Pick them up if you want them, but they are not by any means a must-have Frankie doll, which is a first, that, that's the first time you'll ever hear me say that um, on this channel. For once, I feel like this is a doll where it's like, get them if you want, but unless you're a Frankie Stein completionist or super fan, there's absolutely no other reason to add them to your collection because as far as mix and match values go, and this is strictly from an adult collector perspective, it's a lot harder to piece together a coherent look. Um, I'm sure kids will like them, but I'm not a child anymore, so I cannot offer that perspective at this point in time. Now, that is, I believe, everything that I have to cover for them. Thank you all so much for watching. If you've made it to the end of this video, Give yourself a pat on the back. I know it's a very long one. And thank you all for 1,000 subscribers. It means so much to me that a lot of you have stuck around since the very beginning when I still covered Rainbow High dolls <laughs> more frequently. Um, yeah, that, it's, it's, been a, it's been a ride. Um, anyway, for real this time, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all a little later. Good night.